Hello, Greg Herbert here. This is a message to both the anime and manga industry in Japan and translation and marketing companies elsewhere, and moreover to all fans of anime and manga. My last video spoke about some frustrations Hayao Miyazaki had with the state of anime in 2014. In that he is hardly alone. Hardly alone. It's a shame that in 2014 the industry, the fandom, and the medium at large is on a majority creative free fall. Everywhere you turn outside of the to 3 or 40 E-series, or the sparse number high quality movies. It's well endowed women here, pretty boy by Shonen there, lowly con here, guns here, jiggle there, lather and repeat, lather and repeat. Same old, same old. Miyazaki is tired of it so are we, and so are the silent, and not so silent majority of anime fans. The 90% of fandom that are into Taku losers that don't watch anime to get their fap on. The ones that care about plot storyline and character development quality and watch for attractiveness of story, rather than attractiveness of characters. Now rather than make this another observation complaint video I am going to give a proactive opinion and 5 ways to bring anime and anime fandom back to greatness. Number 5 Stop playing second fiddle to the Otaku minorities both in Japan and the fans lots elsewhere. These wastes of space do not deserve the repaint that the industry especially in Japan get. Now you say they're ridiculed already by the general fandom majority, and even some of general society that are exposed to them. We, especially outside of Japan, ourselves included say what the fuck is this shit and point out the errors of their ways. However they need to be more exposed, ridiculed and shamed. It is the Ataku lifestyle that is giving anime and manga and related media a bad name globally, and I mean Ataku in the Japanese pejorative definition, and its corresponding concurrent cottage industries, legitimate cottage industries like blow-up dolls and pillows with the faces of Moe Loli Konkara. Not to mention the fanzines featuring Oe and Yuri relationships, non-canon stories, and anything that goes against the creators. Abusing creative license to make a small number of otaku happy, and in some cases fappy and wacky. There needs to be rules put in place by both creators, their affiliated publishers and production companies as applicable, and general fandom worldwide to discourage this otaku friendly behavior. This will help advance the positive image of anime and manga globally, and help bring better quality anime to the forefront. Number 4 Stop Playing the Appearance Card Another of the things that give anime and manga a bad reputation amongst the general public both in Japan and globally is that too much emphasis is placed on the attractiveness of characters. Way 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 too much. So much that it's not even funny. So much that Gainax had to create a show that parodied. That made fun of the need to titillate the senses of Ataku, Panty and Stocking, though they ultimately devolved into a renable offer the Ichi crowd. The Ataku crowd took it the other way believing that Gainax was paying Ataku homages Gainax through most not all but most and most of its notable work save R and PSG especially, appealed to Otakus and then E to have titillation. The same for Baishonen creators. You wanna say come to mind? I mean how many versions of fucking Fushigi Yugi do you need? Made by you are to say or not? It seems as if we at Craft could named in or so knockoffs of that franchise not made by her. Pretty boys here, pretty boys there from Galicia to cons to transvestites, to femboys to pans leading men to standard pretty boy princes. Fans lot fodder. It's got to stop. And softly ridiculing the need for so many creators do to take the TNA and abundant mission and way to production is not the mode of which anime should go in 2014, 2015 and beyond. We the anime fan community need to tell really tell these creators to de-emphasize the looks quotient in these have animes and mangas that are saturated with the presence of pretty good looking characters that have no character, that have no emotions, dull like dishwater. Look at me I'm attractive, love me for my looks, fap to me whack off to me. No meaning, you know. Whatever happened to characters with meaning, and characters that grow up with the plot of the storyline, and grow as characters. You rarely see that in the forefront of anime culture, and if you do do better get a shovel outside of a major picture from Miyazaki or like director. We need to concentrate more on the inside than the outside. 3. Likewise there needs to be a moratorium, 
say three years or so, on any new creative idea, be it manga anime or other that is cliche bishnan, ichi, moe, borderline hentai fans of is heavy or dominated, or based on attractiveness of characters over plot, storylines or character developments this should open the door for more quality anime and manga that actually have substance instead of just style, this may offend the diehard attack it will make up for in new potential readers watchers and viewers of anime manga and related media. Number 2 Young creators need to take heed to Hayami as Aki's cry to stop acting like Ataku and start acting like creators. Creators need to get out of their musty apartments and explore the real world and meet people. This is how the world's greatest animators both Japanese and others got their inspirations. Walt Disney didn't get the idea for Mickey Mouse by reading comic strips. He actually found a real mouse scampering in his early studio. Miyazaki's crew at Studio Ghibli went and studied real wolves and other creatures for Princess Mononoke, one of their best-known hits. Why not make that the standard? I think that anime would be greatly helped if they stopped devoting their media to 100% flash and jiggle and injected some reality and fresh ideas to the median. Miyazaki is right when he chided the unprofessionalism of most of today's animators in Japan. That brings me to one. Above everything think outside the box and stop pandering the minority. Anime creators have so much talent and potential to do great things. But who still go around pandering to the otaku minority? Why are a majority of the creators in Japanese media so scared of offending otaku that they have to bore the rest of us with harems both male and female, sexuality over the top, pretty boys and lolicons, and wats with the need to have main characters being teenagers or young 20-year-olds? Why can't we have an a 40, 50, or a dare say 60 or 70 year old main character? Why not it's time to be more egalitarian with concepts and broaden the horizons of opportunity? That's why many older fans originally came to the fandom. Let's stop with the banality and take the path of most resistance. And you that are like-minded, both creators that care and fans around the world in and out of Japan that are not in the otaku slash fan slut community. Let's get to spreading the message to the anime producers and manga creators. Call, write and email to these producers, artists, animators and creators of these animes and mangas. Tell them to stop with the tired old formats and have the sense of urgency to go the path of most resistance. It's time for change in how anime is seen both fandom and the world at large. It's time to go from good to great. Let's get to better.